love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today. Because you care for me in such a special way. That's why I praise you. Yes, Jesus. I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today. Joy. That's why 
live to see another day and it's a blessing because we know even tomorrow isn't promised but that's all right because God is truly on that throne and first of all I, I just like to give an honor to God in the name of Jesus Christ who's truly the head of my life I just can't thank him he's just he's just awesome and I like to give honor to our bishop, Donnie McGriff. Because also, you know, he give us the opportunity to be or let us speak in, in this house, which some people don't do that, but he does. So you know what? I thank God for that too. And I want to give an honor to all those that's out there in the audience, near and far, on Zoom, on Facebook or whatever, um, whatever um, social media. I want to give them an honor as well because you know what? just to get up and even to get on social media might take a, a something to do, but I thank God for that as well. God is just wonderful. He's just awesome. And he gave me this message and because I watch, a, I kind of watch a lot of different things, but also I think about a lot of things and me and Evangelist Mitchell, we always, we, we go back and forth and it's good to have somebody you can go back and forth with. It really is. So, you know, getting somebody you can be with and be honest with and have a conversation with because it does help you out. It, help you, it helps you along the way. But I'm not even going to um, prolong it any further. And my scripture reading is going to come from Revelations chapter 3, verse 14 through 22. And you don't have to stand. I'm just going to read it in your hearing. And it's Revelation chapter 14. I mean, sorry, chapter 3, verse 14 through 22. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things say, Amen. The faithful and the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would, thou, I would that were cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, I will spew you out of my mouth. Because thou sayest I am rich, and I increase with goods, and have not nothing, and knowest not that art wretch, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. I'm going to jump down to the last one. He that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit say unto the church. My topic for today is double-minded man and choose because choose the reason why I say that because a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways he didn't say some of his ways he said all his ways and that's what you have to think about the, if you continue to be double-minded you will be unstable so I ask myself why as a Christian we have such a hard time making a decision when it comes to the matter of God why? These are the things that are a matter of God, but why do we have such a hard time? But we can go out and do everything else, but when it comes to the house of the Lord, we have the hardest time to make that decision. He clearly wants us to choose. He does. Just like he made a new covenant with the children of Israel, he does the same for us today. The Bible of old tells us to serve the Lord with all sincerity and truth and put away those old idols and those old things. Put away all that stuff. Because we're in the day and the age now which we need Jesus. If we don't have Jesus, we ain't got nothing. I don't care what you think you got. You can have all the riches in the world, but if you ain't got Jesus, you ain't got nothing. But you can be the poorest person and living out there on the street, but if you got Jesus, you got everything. It doesn't, we should not be looking at people's economy and find out what they are and what they're not. Because see, God doesn't look at that. He look at your inner man. And he look at, is, are you one of his? I just want to know. Are you one of his? We say we are, but we double-minded. And it, also according to the word of God, and this is what he said. He said, and if it seem 
evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose this day who you're going to serve, whether it be the gods which your father served, or would it be the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land you dwell, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. This is our house right here. We should be serving the Lord. Why are we going out there looking for something else when we got it right here in our house? We ain't got to go looking and seeking it. We got it right here. This is where we serve the Lord. And in your own individual house, you serve the Lord. But this is our, this is our house, this building, right here, this temple. We will serve the Lord. Because if we don't do it, who's going to? You got to ask yourself, why be double-minded? Why? Too many Christians sat, straddle the fence. They're unable to make their mind up on a decision process when it comes to walking through Jesus Christ. We seem to forget that Jesus paid the price for us. We, why do we forget that? We seem to forget that he paid the price so we don't have to be double-minded. We do not have to straddle the fence. We do not have to be lukewarm. Am I hot? Am I cold? Oh, no, I'm not that. I'm, I'm just, I'm, I don't know which side you're going to be on. If you're going to be hot, be hot. Be on fire. If you're going to be cold, get on fire. But if you're lukewarm, I don't need you in my life because I don't know if you're going to run with me or you're going to run away or you're going to run and leave me standing there. Have you ever been in, I've been in a situation where, you know, I've gotten a lot of fights, physical fights. And I was like, if you leave me, I can't trust you. I don't know if you hot. If you hot, we all we we gonna we gonna fight together. We are gonna die together. But if you cold, at least I know you scary, and I'm gonna tell you to go. But if I don't know where you at, I can imagine how Jesus think when a situation comes up in our life. He don't know where we at. We so double minded, then we become unstable. Look at the world to today. Why is unstable? Because we got so many double minded people out there, and Christians. But when it, we got to get, we got to get our life together. We got to get it together. Jesus came that we have an abundant life. I'm always going to say that. He came that we have this abundant life. But we allow the enemy to come in and kill and still to destroy us. I'm always going to say this because when we make bad decisions and we can't stand on our decisions, rather bad, wrong, right, or indifferent, we become unstable. Jesus is our foundation, people. He's the solid rock in which we stand on. If we can't stand on him, who can we stand on? He is a living God. The true living God that's on a throne all by himself. He don't need nobody's help. He's still alive today as he was in the time of old. He still is alive. Why can't we understand that these other gods or idols or whatever are gone, dead? And then here's the, here's the kicker about it. All shall rise and going to see him. Even those that claim that they gods, they going to see the true and living God. They going to be judged accordingly. So why are we serving something that got to see our God? Make a decision and stand. That cross is something. That cross should mean something in our life. Not just the little medals we wear around our neck, but the real meaning of that cross and what it does for us in our life. Just think about if Jesus was double-minded and decided, well, you know what? They waxing so much worse. I'm not going to come down. I'm not going to get myself all together. I'm not going to put myself in the body. Well, maybe I might, depending on what... Uh, let me think. Just imagine if he was like us. We will be in trouble. But because he stood firm way back before the time began, and he already knew he had to come down, get off that throne, robe himself in flesh. Not only that, minister while he was here, cast out that devil that we so letting in our life. He said, greater is he that's in us than he that's in this world. We that got the Holy Ghost can cast that devil out of our life, out of our children's life, and anybody around us. We can lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. These are the things that he gave us power to do. Why do we make or be unstable in our decision making? 
know what he did for us. Not only that, he went down and he did some things when he was down there. Got the keys. And after that, he said, enough is enough. Let me get back up so I can show myself to be alive. So you know that I'm the only true living God that's still alive. Now, if he was in the, in the day, you know he would have much attitude. <laughs> but he is a God that's alive. His name is Jesus. There is no other name that was given under heaven whereby we must be saved, whereby we must walk in, whereby he is the light, the way, he is the true vine. We need Jesus today with all this going on. We need him. If we don't have Jesus again, we don't got nothing. I don't care what we look like. We can have a million dollars looking all good, wearing our stuff. We got nothing if we don't got Jesus. I need to remind you. We must stand up for the word of God. Because if we don't stand up, we're going to fall for everything and anything. That's why we're in trouble today. That's why our decision making is crazy. Because we just, just let everything. We compromise. There's some compromises are good. Don't get me wrong. But when it comes to that word of God, there's no compromise. You either in it or you not. We cannot be some lukewarm Christians that will not will sit there and waver. We waver too much. That's why our churches are not where they are to the day. Zoom got us lazy. I'm sorry to say. We lazy. Because all we do, if we take a shower and get on Zoom, we might just wash our face, maybe brush our teeth and get on Zoom. But when the doors of the church is open, we need to be in the doors of the church. And the reason why I say this, because we can help one another by seeing one another. No matter what, we need to get in the house of the Lord. Because I'm telling you, I'm, don't get me wrong, I think social media is good. But when we don't have to use it, let's get in our places. Because social media can't help us get in our places. And this is what we need to understand. I don't care how far you are, but I guarantee you, everybody in here, or everybody that sounded my voice, went into a grocery store. I went to the mall yesterday. <laughs> And I'm walking next to people, and they're standing, they're not six feet away from me. The salesperson is not six feet away from me. Yes, stay protected. Keep your mask on. But they're not six feet away from you. So why can't you come into the house of God and have some faith? Because the bottom line is Satan got us all crazy. Yes, that pandemic is real. Don't get me wrong. I don't want you to not be safe. But what I want you to know is we have enough faith among us Christians to where we can come into the house of God, ask the Lord to cover us with the blood of Jesus, that nothing can come against us. We said there's no weapon formed. That pandemic is a weapon that's formed against us. We claim in these scriptures, let's use them. Let's be real and let's stand in the word of God. Because if we're going to sit there and talk all this hard, talking all hard, oh, I ain't going there until I get my shot. Get your shot if you can and come on into church. And if you don't, ask the Lord to cover you with the blood and come on into the house of the Lord. Because the bottom line is we need strength. And staying home is not going to give it to us. Yes, we are on social media, but we need the strength of the Lord. We need stronger in numbers because when you're home, you're alone. you isolate it. But when you in a house of God and I can see you, you can see me. There's nothing we can't do. Nothing. We are stronger holding each other. That link that's holding each other. We are only as strong as our weakest link. And the only way you're going to get strong is get in the house of the Lord and get in that word of God. That's the number one thing. Get into that word of God. Know who you are in Christ. Let that word walk through your life. Do not be double-minded. Let that word stay firm in your heart. We, can, we have to be solid with our decision process in righteousness. Solid. You know them old gangster movies when you see you know, gangster movies and they put cement shoes on you and dump you into the river? Jesus, let him be our cement shoes and keep us standing firm where nobody can move us. Because the bottom line is the stronger the foundation is, which is Jesus Christ, 
the stronger we will be. And just think if all of us in a strong foundation, the stronger we will be. The enemy will have to go at bay. Because that name of Jesus is what he feared the most. If we get and start saying Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. If you can't do nothing else but say Jesus, get in a job with Jesus. Lord, I need money, Jesus. I need a house to live in, Jesus. If you don't do nothing but say that name. The name is powerful. It's wonderful. It's a name that was given. Work it out, people. We cannot be indifferent. But what we have to do is make a choice. Choices always come with consequences. But once you make the right choice, it comes with the best consequences. And the best choice to make, near or far, get into the house of the Lord. Get baptized in Jesus' name. Like I told the kids on today, Jesus will cover you with the blood. Go down in his name. That's the only other name. I'm sorry for those that might be offended with the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Yes, that is who he is. I will never take that away from him. But that is not his name. That name is Jesus, and it's powerful. And that's the name we go down. Because he paid the price. He covered us with the blood. When he was washed in the water, he went down himself for the act, for, to, to fulfill the scriptures. Our act of obedience is to do just that. And once we get that Holy Ghost, it helps us make the best decisions in our life. The best. But just think about the power that it has, that Holy Ghost. The power that it displays. It is awesome. Because most people, that's what they live for is power. If you think about them people on Capitol Hill, they're making decisions for us. All they want is power. But we got the best power in the world to make decisions for ourselves. Regardless of what they're doing out there, we got the power to make decisions for ourselves, our homes, our children, grandchildren. They do not have to stand alone when you with them in Jesus Christ. You let them know they're not alone. You let them know who Jesus is. The Bible always tells us to be and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind that you can prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. It's the will of God. When you in Jesus, you have the Holy Ghost. It's the perfect will of God. Because Jesus is a perfect will, and that perfect will is the comforter that's inside you. That's the perfect will of God. You can't get no more perfect than that. And that means if you, if you perfect, he counts you perfect, not us. Thank God I don't count you perfect because you'll be in trouble. But because of Jesus is on that throne all by himself, he counts us perfect. He the one that set us aside. He the one that tell us where to go and what to do. That's who we're supposed to be listening to. That's the decision-making we need to deal with. We have the greatest gift, again, is with the Holy Ghost. The nature of the Holy Ghost. It helps us make sound decisions. Why are we so double-minded? You claim you've got the Holy Ghost, but you can't make a sound decision? A sound choice? Because Why? We neglect the things of the Lord. We get out of our word. We read it when we feel like it. I'm guilty. Because the Lord, the enemy does not want us in his word. Because that's going to help free us. Everything in there from Genesis to Revelations will tell you what you need to do. There is no question about what you need to do. Open that Bible it'll tell you. There's nothing new up under this sun. The word, everybody talking about how, who can know the mind of Christ or the mind of God. Well, it's telling you in them 66 books what his mind is all about. He's telling you how to live, how to walk, how to talk. Yeah, yeah. He's telling you what you need to do, how to stay strong, how to get from up under situations. Yeah. He tells us how to make good decisions and righteousness sake. He tells us all of that. Yeah. There is no doubt about it that he is on your side. And if he is with you, who can be against you? When you know that about God, have everybody, if you got a big brother or you've been a big sister or a big brother or whatever, and they come and get you because they know that you got their back, well, Jesus got our back as well. As long as we believe it, he got our back. No matter what we go through, he got our back. No matter how bad the situation seems in our life, he got our back. No matter what depression we going through, he still got our back. But he want us to clean up our face. 
wipe off those tears and stand for something. Life and death happen all the time in our life. But we can't let this t- stop us because Satan will have us to think, oh, you see what happened? He'll have us to panic. He'll have us to think, oh, look, look, look. Yeah, look. And then open that Bible and look some more and say, here's the answer. I can do all things through Christ that strengthen me. So if he's telling you to look, you look deeper. The deeper you get into that word, the more you will come out of your situation. All these emotional situations that we got, come out of it. Come out of it. That's why I understand, you know, I'd be thinking, I said, that's why the Lord give us a certain amount of time to deal with certain things. Because he does not want us to be in a way where we be hindering, we, we, we get hindered. The devil hinder us with our life situations. People is reality. It's reality. What we need to do is we need to wield our own sword. And that's the Bible. Cut out all the pain, depression, heartache. All the troubles, wield it. Cut all that rest of that stuff out. Make a decision for your life and stand. Do not be double-minded. Choose that you're going to live. Choose life. Life is for the living. If you can breathe and move, you got life. I don't even care if you are, if you just can't move your limbs, but you can open your eyes. You still got life. You, if your mind is still working, you still got life. Those that minds that's out there, we still can pray for them. They still have life. Life didn't stop for them. But we need to do is wield our own sword. But if you double mind it, it tell us we're trying to serve two masters. We cannot. That Bible tell us no man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other. Or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammoth. You can't serve them both. Choose. Because if you keep straddling that fence and you think you can out there and do what you want to do, you're going to find yourself falling in quicksand real fast. And there might not be nobody that give you any life support to get you out. You, now you sunk and you're gone. And the devil's laughing all the way to the bank. I got another soul. Stop him from laughing. Stop him from taking your family. Don't let him laugh all the way to the bank. You laugh to the bank. He's scared of you. Don't you know that? He is scared of you. That's why he caused so much trouble in our life. Because he's scared of you. He's a coward. He's a bully. But he hides behind certain things. He tried to get you in an all in emotional state. So you can make wrong decisions and you can't choose the Lord. And then he go and then try to accuse you. See what I said? They're not going to serve you. Just put a little pressure on them. Take away their car. Take away their house. Take away their family member. Take away everything from them. But Job is a perfect example. All that stuff got taken away from him, but he didn't curse God. We cannot curse God. We got to make a choice and stand. Because that tenfold will come back to you. I don't care who walk out on you, don't want to stay with you, bye. Because you can go. I'm going to let you go. I'm going to still pray for you, but I'm going to let you go, whether it's my children or not. Bye. If you don't want to live for Christ, bye. Because I can't take them to heaven with me, no way. This is an individual, personal walk with the Lord. That's why you got to choose. And when you get of age and you are age of understanding, you got to choose. Because your mama, your daddy, and nobody else can take you with you. You better choose. Young people, if you hear me on, on near and far, your mama and your daddy cannot take you to heaven. Your little good works ain't going to take you there neither. But if you know the word and you know, choose. That means go down in Jesus' name for the remission of sin. Choose. So, again, if we become double-minded... We become unstable in all our ways. We become reckless. But if we let Jesus lead and guide us, will we become a strong force to be reckoned with? 
when we walk in authority, and I'm not talking about arrogance. I'm talking about walking in the authority of Christ Jesus. We become somebody. Somebody, they see it too. They be like, ooh, something different about them. That's who we are. So we got to come to where the sun rules the earth and create the standard by which we are judged or other people are judged. We create the standards. Stop letting other people create standards in our life. We are a child of the king, the most high God. We create the standards. They follow us as we follow Christ. We don't follow them. We don't get double-minded falling into a ditch. We got to live for the Lord and say, I'm going to live for the Lord. Stop using stuff as cliches. I'm going to live for the Lord. I'm going to die for the stop lying. If you really mean it, stand. We must choose life. And this is what I want you to understand. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge is of the holy and understanding. Once you fear the Lord, that means reverence him and acknowledge him. It's something about that. Because then if you want to please the Lord and reverence him, you will do his will. Not our will be done. We say that. We do it in cliches. Oh, Lord, let your will be done. But your will might be that you have to take the bus to church just to see if you really believe what you're saying. Or you might have to take somebody and bring them to church with you that you might kind of not like and they rub you the wrong way. But since they live on along your path, you got to pick them up anyways. And the Lord said, okay, I'm going to put this sandpaper in her life or his life to see it to rub her clean. I'm going to refine her. I'm going to put some fire up under this and, and then make sure that they refine. I'm going to turn them into 24 karat gold. But I need to put them in their life and see what they say. We don't want that. We just want that silver spoon. But that silver spoon don't mean nothing in your mouth if you ain't got Jesus. You got to have Jesus. For whosoever find Life, find me, findeth life. That's what he's saying. And shall obtain favor. Something about that favor of God. It's something about that favor of God. You can have, you don't have to have anything, but if you have favor of God, you got it all. Because you can walk in somewhere and it might be crowded. And I said this before, I, around the holiday times. No, I don't celebrate the holidays because they're pagan. I'm just going to plug that in there. But I still go shopping because they have sales. <laughs> And the parking lot is crowded. But the Lord show favor, and where's the parking spot? Right there in the front. Because why? Favor of the Lord is with me. Because that's what it is, favor. So when you got the favor of God, you got it all. But a man that sinneth against him wrong his own soul. And they... That they hate, they hate them, they love death. We got to love the Lord so much that we choose life. Because that's what he's been giving us. He started from the beginning. He tried to make atonement for us all through the beginning. Mm-hmm. Until the end. Until he came off that throne. He atoned for us now that we got life. So stop giving your problems, cares, and mishaps to Jesus only to pick them back up. And you pick him up because he's not moving fast enough for you. So you be double-minded. Stop. We say we cast our cares on him. Then why are we so stressed out? We say Jesus is our Lord and our Savior. So why do we act like we are dying because real life happening? We say we have faith. But when trouble happens, we make excuses to continue on in our mess And we doubt that Jesus can do it. We say we are strong, but when the rain comes, we get soft like noodles in hot water. We can't even stand. Like God told Joshua, be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whatsoever thou goest. That's the same thing that happened to us. If he went with Joshua, he going to go with us. Let's look at some men in the Bible. Let's look at some Bible examples. We got to be like Noah, consistent, steadfast. When God told him it was going to rain, he built a boat. Build your boat. Get in it. Let the Lord shut the door where nobody else can't penetrate it. That means the devil can't even get in there. Be consistent. 
like Abraham, be faithful. When God told him to get out of his father land, he followed without wavering. So we got to have faith not to waver when the Lord told us to do something. We got to move like Abraham. Be like Isaac. He was obedient. When he was about to be sacrificed, a ram appeared and took his place. So don't think when you get ready to be sacrificed that the Lord won't have a ram in a bush for you. He will. This is why them, book, them stories are in there, to encourage you that whatever happened then happens now. Be like Jacob. Be vigilant. He wrestled with an angel until he was blessed. Stop letting go of your blessings because you're scared to fight. Wrestle. Wrestle hard all day. Sweat. If you have to, put them, them, them sweatpants on. Don't be trying to be cute when you're wrestling with the angel. Get down and dirty because you want to be blessed of the Lord and highly favored. We always say, I'm blessed of the Lord and highly favored. Do you really believe it? Believe it because it's there. Because God is our El Shaddai. He's the almighty God. He's our El Elyon. He's the most high God, the exalted one. He's Elohim, God of eternity, God of everlasting. That's the only true living God, an everlasting God. There is no other God before him and we'll come after him. When you think of the goodness of Jesus, really, we say that, but think about the goodness of Jesus and what he would do for you. That's who he is. He's Adonai Jireh. We say Jehovah, Jehovah Jireh. He's our provider. Do we really believe that he's our provider? Do we really believe it? He's Adonai Nisi. He's the Lord of our banner. He's Adonai Shalom. He's the Lord of peace. He's Adonai Sabah, the Lord of hosts. Do you understand that? He got so many different functions and so many different names in your life, but he's all that. Now we can say he's all that in a bag of chips, a big bag. And let me, let me break it down to you. If he's all that in a bag of chips, a big bag, and you got him inside you, then that should make you all that. Even though people talk about, you ain't all that. Yes, I am. You can tell me I'm not all that, but I am. You can tell me I'm not living my good life and my best life, but I am through Jesus Christ. I am. I don't care if I don't have this, I don't have that, but I'm living my best life because I got Jesus Christ. And greater is he that's in me than he's that's in that world. So I'm living a good life. I'm living my best life. Because without him, I have nothing. But with him, I have everything. And if you got him, you got everything. You can walk in Christ. He is your refuge. He's your strong tower. He will help you get through when you are going through. He is a wonderful God. He's the most high God. He sits on his throne. Remember, he's all by himself. He is helping you make the decisions because what he want to see, your face in peace. You want to see his face in peace. You want him to say, well done my good and faithful servant. You want him to say, come on, when you hear that sound, you want to be caught up with him to meet him in the air. You don't want to be left behind to deal with this mess because we already in a mess. But when we got Jesus, we caught up. Hallelujah. We caught up. We cannot live in this world and not have troubles. We're going to have it. But we always talk about troubles don't last always, and it don't because we got Jesus. He is our trouble Fixer. He fixed it. When you think you're going through, he's right there. Keep him in the forefront of your mind. End all that bitterness in your life. Let him be your rock. Let him be your fortress. Let him be your shield. Let him be the sun. Let him be the refiner in your life. Let him make you pure and holy. Let him give you a new body at the end of the day. Because when he comes, he's going to say, come, my people. We're going to be translated and up out of here. So stay the course. Press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Jesus Christ. Stay your course. Be careful for nothing, but for everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let our requests be known unto God. And the peace of God that passes all understanding shall keep your heart and your mind through Jesus Christ. So in conclusion, don't be double-minded. Be blessed.
God is wonderful. And for those that's near and far, after hearing this word, and you don't want to be double-minded anymore, you want to make a decision to stand, well, this is a place to come. Or if you in another state, your local apostolic church, get there. If you haven't been baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of sin, get there. Go down. And if you're here in the San Diego area, San Diego County, as far as L.A. and you want to travel, come on. We have the water back there. We'll take you down in Jesus' name for the remission of sin. So wipe away all that mess in our life because that's what it's for. He will give you that Holy Ghost that will help keep you standing. He will protect you. He will lead and guide you into all truth that you can make decisions. But the right decision right now is tugging at your heart. You come in. Come in. Get saved. Live righteous. Because time is winding down. Tomorrow isn't promised to anyone. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. We take no thought for that. Yes, I'm not telling you not to, to make your um, vacation plans and so on and so forth. Do all that. But understand, we live for today. And today you make your decision for today. And call. Call on the phone. I want to get into the house of the Lord. I want to be baptized. I want, I want. I want to be saved. I don't want to live this wretched life anymore. I don't want to be raggedy. I want somebody to be strong in my life. I need Jesus. We all need Jesus. Come into the house of the Lord so we can be strong in numbers. Let that be that threefold cord that cannot be broken. You come. And if you need prayer in your life, call the church. Call or do the prayer line. There's prayer that you can have. That way you're, you're, you can be answered. And if you think you can't have your prayers answered, don't let the enemy tell you that lie. Because I wouldn't be here if my prayers was not answered. I was, I was out there, out the box. But somebody prayed for me and got me here and could do the same thing for you. Don't think you're the worst case scenario. you not. Read that Bible. You see a whole bunch of worst case scenarios in there. But the Lord turned their situation around. If you want your situation turned around, get into the house of the Lord. Get yourself saved first. And that way you can live. Don't say, I need to get right first before I get saved. That doesn't work. You get in the house of God, you take step by step, and then you get saved, and then you get right. And then not only that, not only that, other people will follow you. You be the leader, be the standard which people got to follow. That's what you do. So this is what I want you to do. I want you to make that decision. Choose life. Because the enemy wants to kill, steal, and destroy your life. He wants you to go to eternal damnation. Hell is not the final resting place. That's going to get cast into the lake of fire. So it's going to get cranked up. And there's nothing you can do. You'll want the mountains to fall on you and they ain't going to fall. You'll wish you can go, but you can't. Don't believe them other people talking about you just going to be in oblivious. That's a story. That's a story made up to keep people from coming to the Lord. And I was looking at something and, and one, it was a, um, a prominent person talking about, I ain't afraid of hell. I'm not. No, he said, I'm an atheist. I'm a true atheist. I'm not afraid to burn in hell. Why is it that they can believe in the devil, but they can't believe God? That, 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 that bothered me. So don't think that, that heaven and hell is, is, is not real. It's real. Make your decision to come. Come forth because God is with you through the name of Jesus Christ. And I'm going to go ahead and pray and I'm going to leave it with you. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. Oh, please stand. We thank you for today and your word. Lord, let that word penetrate somebody's heart that they make a choice to come to you. Let the phone ring off the hook here at the church that we be continue to be busy to do our work. Lord, we ask you right now to touch each and every one, even now in pain, be their shield and their refuge so that they can see. Remove the blinders off them, Lord, that the scales fall from their eyes that they can see clearly that you are in their corner, that you are their strength, you are their rock, their salvation. Lord, let them take on that name, Jesus, that they can have power to overcome the enemy. Lord, we thank you and praise you in advance for what you're gonna do, even those that are here today, Lord. We ask you right now to continue to bless them and touch them, Lord, even if they make a decision to just stand and choose you. Cause that's all we can ask, Lord. And you show everyone a favor, Lord Jesus, that they know that you are there in their corner. We thank and praise you for what you're going to do in the name of Jesus. 
Amen. Amen.